National Day of Mourning was established in Canada at the urging of the Canadian Labour Congress in 1984 and is now recognized in over 80 countries around the world. With the passing of the Workers' Mourning Day Act in December 1990, this day became one of national observance for people who were killed or injured in the workplace. The purpose of the Day of Mourning is twofold. To remember and honor those lives lost or injured and to renew the commitment to improve health and safety in the workplace to prevent further deaths, injuries and diseases from work. Unfortunately, the annual observance of this day has not made it safer for workers. In 2009, which is the most recent year for which we have statistics, 939 Canadians lost their lives as a result of workplace accidents. In New Brunswick, uh, there were six fatalities this past year, five in 2010 and one so far this year. There were 104 workplace accidents reported in New Brunswick in 2010 and so far this year there have been eight reported workplace injuries. Nearly a thousand Canadian workers lose their lives each year as a result of workplace accidents or of fatal diseases caused by workplace conditions. Many die as a result of preventable incidents or because of fatal diseases such as cancer and acidosis caused by exposure to workplace carcinogens. Each year for the past 27 years, labour councils like ours all across Canada have organized events like today's. Yet we continue to mourn the loss of our fellow workers as a result of workplace incidents. Why? Because workers still die as a result of workplace accidents. We're fortunate, well, we are fortunate to have with us today Linda Keeley and Tom Mann, who are here to express their thoughts today on the occasion of a Workers' Day of Mourning ceremony. Dr. Linda Keeley is a faculty member of UNB, and she has been since 2002, and previously she was a faculty member at Memorial University of Newfoundland. Her recent research and publications have focused on healthcare history in Canada, and particularly the role of women as nurses and midwives. Several recent articles focus on union, unionization and labor struggles of New Brunswick nurses. Her research builds on previous studies of Canadian women